Right, that's me. I'm off to the doctor's. Here, have you had a bath? I had me bath on Sunday, and I didn't blame me need it then, dear. Hey, my word, Jack. There'd be no fear of water shortages if we were all like you. Look, I don't want you showing me up at that surgery. And I put you some clean underpants and vest down. Have you got a bomb? Yes, yes. yes. You know, I don't know why I'm bothering me. It's something or nothing, just a twinge in the legs. Look, you're going, and that's all there is to it. Yeah, go on, get yourself sorted out. Hey, got nothing to do with you. It has, you know. We're running a business here, not an old folks coach outing, and there's no room for passengers. I pull my weight on a damn sight more than some people. Well, I hope you're not looking at me. I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at him. Eh? Hey. Here. Come on, sit down, have a cup of tea. But dear, I don't want a cup of tea. You do! Come on, sit down. Oh. They'll probably ask you to give a sample. And knowing you, you'll be stood there and, and not will be happening, as I could tell them. Uh, I, th I think I'm in the wrong surgery. Have a seat, Mr Duckworth. Uh, no, dear, I I'm on Dr Thackeray's boots, you see. I'm Dr Thackeray's successor in the practice. He died 18 months ago. Oh, blimey, did he? Nobody told me, did he? I remember mean, How old would he be? He'd, he'd only be... <sighs> Looking through your file, Mr Duckworth, it seems your visits were quite frequent until about two years ago. Mm. But since then, nothing. Oh, well, I'm self-employed now, you see, my own boss. No funny going sick in your own time, is there? <laughs> What's the problem? Well, summer to note. I mean, just, just a bit of pain in my legs, that's all. Which leg? Well, the, 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 this one, and then this one. But this one's the worst. I mean, the only reason I'm here is that my missus just keeps nagging me. You know what women are like. All right, Mr Duckworth. I'd like you to undress to your underclothes and put yourself on the bed. What do you mean, strip off? Can you just give us a couple of pills or something? No, Mr Duckworth. I need to give you a thorough examination. You know what women are like? <laughs> Right, legs down, please. Now sit up, please, and let your legs hang over the side. Let it all hang out, eh, Doc? Just the legs, Mr Duckworth, thank you. But what's all this in need of? I was just seeing how long it took your legs to regain a touch of pink, Mr Duckworth. Yeah, well, they haven't seen a lot of sun, have they? They don't look like they've seen a lot of anything, Mr Duckworth. Do you smoke, Mr Duckworth? Yeah, well, I do, but not at the moment, thanks very much. No. I wasn't offering you a cigarette. I was asking if you smoked. Yes, you do. How many do you smoke a day? Uh, a couple. Two cigarettes a day. Packets. Oh, Where's our Jack? It can't be a doctor's all this time. Well, that he's got medical science baffled, really. He could end up in the university, your Jack. In one of them big glass jars they have. <laughs> 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 It's just as well your wife made you come and see me. It's not a good picture, Mr Duckworth. <laughs> the only positive thing I can say is you're not diabetic. Oh, great. But your lung function is well below what it should be. That's the smoking, no doubt. And this pain in your legs... No, I haven't got any now, have a dog. You will have, I think, before the day's over. Your arteries are in very bad shape. They've narrowed. The blood can't get through. Your circulation is not what it should be. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll need some pills, will I? Yes, you will. Yes. But what you've got to do, top priority, is change your lifestyle. You're overweight, you don't eat the right foods, you drink too much. I'm sure you know this, don't you? I'll admit, yes, I have the odd one. But the other one's completely normal. <laughs> you can't laugh the problem away, Mr Duckworth. You're cutting short your life. I'll give you a diet sheet which you should try very hard to follow and you ought to cut the drink down to a reasonable level. Take some exercise, nothing too ambitious. Above all, you have got to stop smoking right away. Oh, now, come on, I, I could go down. If you don't, it's a very poor outlook. What do you mean by poor? You could lose a leg. Or worse. Well, at last. Do you know what time it is? You can't have been at doctor's all this time. How'd you get on? Don't ask. Better go have a word. Hey, how 
did you go on at doctors? What did you say? It was a woman. Dr Thackeray died about 18 months ago, so they, uh, hey, how much did he know? Don't do this, cut that out, eh? How much did they really know, V? Well, a lot more than you do. So what did she say then, this lady doctor? She said I should be looked after properly. Cosseted. No aggravation. And not to be opposed in any way. Oh, give over, your lying toad. What did she say about your legs and the truth? She said I could lose them, Vera. I don't know. I'm... According to her, everything I've been doing is wrong. Eating, drinking, smoking. Yeah, Luke, she even give me a flaming diet sheet. You want to read that? Like a bunny rabbit's breakfast, that. Lettuce and cabbage and all that kind of rubbish. So it's serious, then? Look, come on. Arterios, somehow or other. It's hardening of the arteries. The blood won't pass through. So I've got to look after myself and give up everything that I find pleasurable. So what did she say about relations? Oh, I mentioned my uncle Herbert. I, I mean, he died no age, did he? You know, I mean, he dropped dead in the queue for the bookies. <laughs> Not them relations. I'm on about... Oh, the other... that. No, no, she never mentioned them, no. Oh, that's all right. I mean, that's... That's one thing she hasn't put block on. <laughs> oh, no, just everything that I find pleasurable and exciting. That's what I've got to knock off. Avoid all fried foods, avoid sweet, sugary foods, alcohol, not more than two or three drinks, three Will times a week. Will you give over, woman? Hey, you know, we've got a pub to run out here, which this one seems to have forgotten. He's not done a hand's turn all day. Don't you start. The doctor said he's to have no aggravation. In fact, chance of that. Married to you, working with him, no tasty food, lay off the drink. I may as well go and chuck myself in the cut now. Hey, now listen. I don't want you stood out there in that bar nursing the mineral water telling folk booze is killing them. It'll put customers off. Never mind the customers. This is my husband we're talking about. It's life or death to him. Thank you, Vera, my love. Look, you'll be all right if you change your ways. And I'm going to make sure you do. Look, the doctor told you to stop smoking. I will, I will. Oh, iron pigs will fly. Man, look, I can stop any time I like me, eh? Yeah? Yeah, like that, I could stop tomorrow. Oh, I tomorrow. Yeah, it's today you can't manage. Look, Jack, that's your last fag. All right, this is my last fag. After I've smoked this one, I will never smoke another. Fifty quid says you can't quit. Fifty quid if this time next week you're still off them. You're on. Facts. Who needs them, eh? Not me. Goodbye, nicotine. Right. That was my last fag ever. Finito, benito. No problem. You know, I think this calls for a drink. Oh. Is there uh, any more tea in that pot, Jack? Oh, no, I know. What do you think? I'm psychic. No, no, I mean, it's just that you're nearest to it. I was only going to suggest I brew another, that's all. Tell me, does it not bother you knowing that you're smoking yourself into an early grave, eh? Me? No, no, no. No, fit as a flea I am. Always have been. <laughs> have one, if you want one. <laughs> I don't want one. I know you do. I don't. But I'm just going to handle one. Just so I, I know for a fact that I definitely don't want one. It can light up if you want. <laughs> just as long as you know it'll cost you 50 quid. Not even tempted, Ali. Mm -hmm. Of course, some people find that helpful, you know. You know, to uh, pretend to smoke, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, just have something in their hands, sort of thing. You know. Mind you, there's nothing to replace that kick at the back of the throat, is there, when you inhale? Is there, Jack? All right, all right, you can have your 50 quid, but you're going to have to have it in instalments and not a word to Alvira, dear. Do you know I can't let you out my sight for two minutes? Do you want to die, you damn Look, beggar? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm oh, sorry. Willpower. It was his fault. He's been egging me on. Nah, it wasn't me. That's it. New house rules in here. No smoking at meal times. No um, arguments. Oh, hey. Flaming doctors. They're not happy till they've taken away every last pleasure you've got. Look, keep still. Get on with it. 
Got a lovely back, Jack. I am not interested. Apart from the blackheads. Look, why don't you let me put it on my arm like it does in the picture? You know why? Because you'll only rip it off once you start fancying a fag and putting it out of reach, out of temptation. You've got no faith. Here. That's right. And listen, if you smoke with that patch on, you'll overdose and you'll kill yourself. Right, put your shirt back on. <laughs> Yeah, he's got his nicotine patch on now, so don't you go tempting him. Him? He doesn't need any tempting. Look, one whiff of a cigarette, he could overdose. And I'll hold you responsible. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dear, oh dear. The sights you see when you haven't got a gun. Well, it's a good job it's me and not Samantha, that's all I can say. No young lass should have that thrust upon her. Get lost, go away. Do you want me to give you a hand? Eh? Well, only I think you'd do right to try and take it off, because they don't work, you know, them patches, from what I've heard. Do they not? No, yeah, no. Yeah. Let me help you. Only uh, don't tell Vera I've helped you, right. will you? Oh, no, get oh. off! You're not getting your 50 quid out of me, pal. <laughs> I nearly did this morning. Aye. Well, you won't now, because that patch is staying on there. Come hell or high water. Yeah. Yeah. What the heck's that? Uh. Will you stop doing that? You look like a jailer ready to lock us up. Sorry, love. Sorry. Ah, morning, Jack. Morning. How's your nicotine patch? Fine, thanks, Alec. Uh, and you can put that out and all. Eh? I told you it's a no smoking zone. Yes, but. Uh... No buts except in the ashtray. Listen, I'm not the one giving up smoking. What about my civil liberties? Well, you're not taking him in my house. Look how Jack's having a difficult time. We've all got to help him, even you. Very well. Ah, Jack, there you are. I wonder where you got to. Not exactly bustling, is it? Well, I was worried in case you were going through cold turkey, or whatever they call it. Or worse, having a crafty fag in the backyard. Mm. No, not me, Alec. A will of fortified concrete. Uh, much like your skull. What's all this in, Jack? Giving up the dreaded weed, have we? I have, Michael. Yes, I have. Yes, yes. For how long? Two days, 22 hours and 15 minutes. Oh, well. Don't let me put you off. <laughs> Rose return. Jack! Was that someone on the phone for me just then? Uh, who was it then? Are you quite all right, Jack? Are you sure? In a very peculiar shade. Ali! Why don't you, uh, why don't you step outside? You look like you could do with some good fresh air in your lungs. Is this what it's like under enemy fire? Jack! What? Ben, now. Hey? That flaming chewing gun, my nerves are shot! Your nerves? It's healthy, isn't it? Not polluting your flaming atmosphere? He's a liar. Get shocking wind. Thank you for sharing that, Vera. Look, you're just swapping one bad habit for another. First of all, it's chewing gum, then it'll be on bugs and cream cakes. You'll be blowing up out of control. You'll end up like Elvis. <laughs> now that I would like to see. But if, if, if we could just have one cigarette, just one puff. Look, I know what you want. Get your shirt off and I'll give you one. That'll steady your nerves. I'm not feeling that bad, Vera. Should I be hearing all this, Vera? Look, you'll be thanking for me for it after. And you avert your eyes. Avert my eyes? I'd rather leave the planet. Hang <coughs> a 
without? Well, you sneaky swine, and there's me here feeling sorry for you. Yeah, but I'll be desperate, Vera. Desperate, you will be. You'll be overdosing on nicotine. Get him off. Don't hurt me. Now, hold still. Oh, be gentle. Don't man. ask, Look, Samantha, get him what's off. going on in there and make your hair curl. I'm not hurting you. Oh. Oh, you're a soft thing. Oh, no, Look, don't hurt. Oh, hold oh. still. Get him off. Oh. I think I need another cigarette. <laughs> See? <laughs> 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 Weird. It's very ageing smoking, you know. It gives you wrinkles and crow's oh. feet and all that. Yeah. Aren't you the little sunbeam today? Yeah, I've heard it all before, Jack. And is it true you're really only 25? <laughs> 21, I heard, but he's had a hard life. Oh, you can laugh, but you think of all the brass you're throwing away and for what? Hey, Jack, did you change that bottle for me? Have you got cloth ears? I told you three times. Yes, 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 I have. Hey, temper, Ooh. temper. Pressure's obviously getting to him. I think he needs another patch, Vera. Yeah, I'm in charge of the patches, and I say he's got to suffer. Yes, meanwhile, we all suffer with him. Here, Jack, ashtrays when you're ready. You love twisting the knife, don't nay, you? Nay, 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 you nay. can see I'm rushed off my feet here. Now, yes. <laughs> See, that's more like it. <laughs> oh. Gotcha. What, what? Jack, you have all the resolve of a nymphomaniac at a rugby club dinner. I would ask for you see, you don't know what it's like. I would hallucinate it. Aye, hallucinate about getting your greedy mitts on my 50 quid. Ah, well, maybe we could come to an agreement there. You could have the money, on condition, you keep the traps up with Alvira. On condition? Jack, you were smoking a cigarette. Yes, but only one, and it was medicinal. Listen, that makes our agreement null and void. By rights, I shall be in there telling Vera straight no, no, away. No, 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 don't do that, because you, you know how a little upset her, won't it? Like I said, it was only one. There you see. I give up again. Yeah. Well, if you're sure that's your last one... On my pigeon's lives. Well, I shall sleep easier in the knowledge, Jack. Mine, I think. I'll sleep easier now, he's not his 50 flaming quid. Come on, my little dolly, sweetheart. Daddy's got a heck for you to sit on. Ah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I'm smoking, but I'm not. Aren't you? No, no, you see, my, my pigeons, they're, they're losing the bearings. Oh. Hmm. Ever since I've stopped smoking, you see, their navigational system has gone haywire. Really? Hmm. Well, you, you might think they only come back here because it... Somewhere familiar, like a nest box. No, no. It's the sound of my voice. It's the aroma of me aftershave. Slight whiff of ale. Smell of cigarettes. Oh, one of nature's mysteries, love. I. You see, now I've stopped smoking, I've got to wean them off it. What, so they have withdrawal symptoms just the same as humans? Oh, ah, yes, it was. My Dolly Pan didn't even recognise me. Do you know, Jack, I think it's marvellous what you're prepared to do for those birds. Mm. A sacrifice, but worth making. Very impressed. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. No, 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 my fault, Jack. I um, lost my bearings. Like your pigeons. Do you know, Vera? I was like a bear with a sore head when I gave up. I know, it surprised me. Do you know, I thought it'd be in climbing wall. He must have exceptional willpower. Do you know, I think he deserves a medal. Hey, did you hear that, Jack? <coughs> Natalie says you deserve a medal. Uh -huh. Thank yeah. you very much. Oh. If anybody needs me, I'll be, I'll be back in a minute. Right. Bye. Oh, have you seen Jack on your travels? 
have a feeling that he's helping Dolly with her navigation problems. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, Vera, love, what? do us a favour, will you? See if Jack's in the back. Tell him there's a barrel needs changing. Right, yeah. Do you know something, Alec Gilroy? You are a very wicked man. <laughs> oh, you there! Here, what's going on? I know what you're thinking. You think I'm smoking, but you're wrong. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I'm daft. Well, I'm not, cos I saw you. No, no, V, what, what it is, my pigeons are all at sea since, since I stopped smoking. You do? You think I'm soft in there, don't you? No, no, I'm not inhaling. I'm, I'm blowing it into the loft to reassure them, like. Yeah, well, I'll reassure you, Jack Duck, with your lying tongue. Don't shout, you frighten me pigeons. Look, I'm not bothered about the pigeons. I'm more bothered about you. Don't you realise you've got to give up for your own sake? Difficult, Vera. You can do it. I know you can. Is everything all right? I thought I heard a commotion. <laughs> Is that cigarette smoke I can smell? Surely not. Yeah, well, you can smirk. I'll get him off them fags if, it, if it's the last thing I do. See? You're no help. Smoking all over the shop. Of course I'm a help. I've helped give him an excuse for not stopping. I meant help him stop. I don't want to help him stop, Vera. You're Jack weak-willed and full of nicotine. I can just about stand. The thought of him all smug, inviting folk to smell his breath. Ooh, no, thank you. I bet you've been smoking now, haven't you? No. See, I can't believe a word he says. You're talking about you never could. You can't blame that on cigarettes. Hey, yeah, you see, I could stop smoking as fast as the next man if I didn't have this flaming job. What job? Working behind that bar every hour God sends, breathing in everybody else's flaming smoke. You see, it wouldn't matter whether I stopped smoking or not, I'd still be getting the harmful effects. Well, mm. I suppose there's some truth in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wear a mask. What do you mean by that? One of them things they wear for cycling. Look, never mind a mask. And you're right. You don't want folks smoking all over you. No, I don't. Right, well, we'll tell them. We'll turn it into a no-smoking pub. Oh, why don't we turn it into a no-drinking pub? While we're at it, cut us throats from here to here instead of halfway. Well, they've done it in other pubs. Yeah, other pubs. Out in Cheshire, where they eat lettuce and drink carrot juice. Not round here. They expect a fag with the school milk round here. Really, we? We sell fags. We can't do that and expecting them not to smoke. Ah. You, you look, you'll have to excuse me. This is all very interesting, this description of life on the other side of the moon, but I've got work to do. Listen, will you agree with me if we take a vote? Well, maybe we need to find out a bit more of, like, how it's going to affect us. Well, I don't think it will, you know. I mean, some might not like it, but, well, some might be delighted. Have you heard your wife going round telling everybody we're making this place no smoking? Yeah, well, it's not my idea. No, but it's your fault, coming home and telling her what your doctor had said. Why couldn't you lie to her as normal? She got it out of me. Oh, did she? Well, would you mind having a word with her? Put a stop to all this while we're still some serious drinkers left. <sighs> Alec is right. Folk won't come in the pub if they can't have a sick. Oh, you've asked him, have you? I don't have to. Well, I have. I've asked them, and you'd be surprised. Some don't like it, but some are delighted. Yes, Mike? Uh, gin and tonic, please. Have you asked him, have you? No, not yet. Ask me what? Would you still come in here and not smoke your cigars because it was a non-smoking pub? Probably not. But then I often wonder why I come in here anyway. There you are. Thank you. Hey, are you here? Yeah. Hey, I've not asked you to yet, have I? Uh, what would you think if we turn this into a no-smoking place? Well, I'd think you were very brave. What do you mean, brave? Well, there'd be nobody in. Yeah, but wouldn't you like it? All that fresh air and none of these dirty ashtrays about. Well, yes. Yeah, but, I mean, we'd be stood here on his own, wouldn't uh, we? 680. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You know, I, I can't believe this is your initiative, Alec, a no-smoking rovers. Vera, I think we need a word right now. <laughs> In there. Ah, you're here. All the better. Here, you've been smoking, haven't you? 
Now, listen, can I just say to both of you, when I put my money into this place, I wasn't putting it into a salad bar or a health farm, but into a pub where folk can smoke and drink and pay for the privilege. Now, if you want to stop him smoking, the best of luck to you, because, quite frankly, the state of him sometimes, he gives us smokers a bad name. But I'm telling you now, Vera, don't try and change this establishment in the process, right? Well, there's a lot of folk agree with me. Oh, how many? Well, there's... Or what would you say? 50%? Yeah, I suppose so. Well, there you are, you see. We'd lose half us custom. Are you listening to this? Yes. The way your wife's going on, she's going to shut this place down. This is a smoking pub, and I vote it stops one. Now, are you with me or of not? Of course I am, yes. Well, well, there you are, you see, Vera. You're outvoted two to one. Now, whatever you do with him, and I personally don't care if he smokes, doesn't smoke, or bursts into flames, but can we have an end to these daft ideas? He thinks he owns this pub, and us and all. Oh, come on, Vera, he's right. You're bankrupt within a week if you stop smoking in there. Look, it's you I'm trying to stop smoking. Yeah, well, maybe that's a waste of time and all, because when you first come in, yes, I was smoking. Yes, I'll be smoking tomorrow and the day after. Because, Vera, that's what I am, a smoker. And when we first got married, I was smoking. So you've got no complaint. Up. Let's sit down. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, look, just for a minute. Look, Jack, I only want you to stop smoking because I can't bear to think what might happen to you if you don't. Oh, they exaggerate. Not always the don't. I mean, you could end up having both your legs off or dying of lung cancer. Oh, yeah, and I could get knocked down so I don't go out of the house. <sighs> look, I don't want to argue with you, Jack. And I don't care about them in there. They can smoke all the like. They can drop dead and pile up at side at bar. But you're my husband. And we spent all our lives together. I don't want to end up pushing you around in a wheelchair or watching you die in agony. Oh, I know, I know. But that's all I wanted to say. I'll give them up, I will. Well, it, it's up to you. I, I, I'm not going to nag. No, I know. It's up to me. But I'll do it, V. Hey? I'll give him up. Oh, Jack. Here, I thought you'd had a sandwich for your dinner. No, I was a bit peckish, though. Bit peckish? How many rashes have you had? I didn't count. Uh, maybe one. Oh, I'll give over. Even you can count past one. Oh, come on, Vera. Since I've stopped smoking, I could eat a scabby monkey. Look, you're just as likely to kill yourself eating all that greasy food. Well, that's it, isn't it? If I can't smoke and I can't eat, what other pleasure have I got in life? Any chance of some help out there? Look, I'll be out in a minute. What are you doing? What help the girl? Now, look, what do you usually do when you've had a meal? Yeah, well, not when other people are about here. I have got some manners. Don't be so silly. You have a fag, don't you? Now, look, I'm stopping here till you get back into that bar. Just so long as one of you comes. Look, it's for your own good, Jack. Do you know that's what my father used to say just before he gave me a right blethering, eh? Don't tell me. This is going to hurt you more than it hurts me. Here. Where are you slipping off to? I'm off out. You're not going for cigarettes, are you, Jack? Vera, I promise. Yeah, well, just remember what I said, cos I mean it. Vera, no more cigarettes, honest. I won't be long. Hey, up, Jack. Natalie about. Day off, son. Oh, she at home? Desmond, if I show the slightest interest where Natalie was on her day off, Vera would not only stop me smoking, she'd stop me breathing. Where have you been till now, eh? And what the hell's that? This, Vera, my love, is the answer to my problems and the answer to your dreams. Is it one of them magic ones, Jack? Makes you vanish in a puff of smoke. Oh. Looks like a smelly old pipe to me. <laughs> that is not a smell, it's an aroma. <laughs> Listen, when I was a kid, only riffraff smoked cigarettes. A gentleman smoked a pipe. Yeah, and they got cancer of their lips as well as their lungs, Jack. Do you know, if I didn't know you were stupid, I'd reckon you had a bump on your head while he'd been out. Oh, well, the man in the shop, he said he made me look like one of them old-time film stars, like Cary Grant or David oh. Niven. A, <laughs> a man of mystery, heir of sophistication. Makes you look like a prat. Yeah, but a sophisticated prat, Jack. 
Well, I don't know about anyone else around here, but I am not working behind this bar with him smoking that thing. So either it goes or I do. Yeah, me too. Come on, love. <laughs> yeah, so put that in your pipe and smoke it. Well, you see, Vera, you don't understand, you see. No, I don't understand why you're desperate to kill yourself. No, but that's the point. With a pipe, you don't inhale. You just savour the flavour, don't you? I mean, there's loads of flavours. There's, there's cherry and there's plum pudding. Hey, it's, it's Samantha, Samantha, think Christmas, the smell of plum pudding. Does that bring back happy memories, eh? What are you going on about? <laughs> he reckons he only wants a pipe, you know, for different smells. It's not to do with tobacco. No, there's, there's loads of different aromas, you know, I mean, not, not just cherry or plum pudding. I mean, even you could pick one if you want, Vera. Look, Jack, if I want different smells, I buy perfume <laughs> or lavatory cleaner. Well, the stuff you buy can never tell the difference. <laughs> and I mean, there's, there's also that herbal tobacco, isn't there? Look, Jack, you've really got to want to give up. But I do, I do. Well, there is one thing that you could try. I've always tried everything. Well, what about hypnotherapy? You get loads of ads in the papers. Give up smoking, stop stuttering. All sorts. Yeah, Martin's right, you know. It can be really effective, Jack. Oh, yeah. I could always have a word with an hypnotist, couldn't I? Work it so that every time I click my fingers, Jack has to prove himself a man. For God's sake, nobody buy her a pair of castanets. <laughs> Close as we used to be. Anyway, being later, I'm sure you can ask him yourself. Here, yeah, Natalie, Samantha, what do you think? Help with phobias, pain control or stress management, relaxation, slimming or panic attacks. Vera, what are you going on about? An hypnotist, Brad Jack, stopping smoking. Oh, Vera, they're a bit of a con, aren't they? Oh, no, they've all got letters behind the name. Oh, well, can't say fairer than that. But it says, specialist in traumas, emotional disorders. How do you think it's that far gone? Yeah, yeah. Magenta Savannah will help you stop smoking. Now, that's the one you want. Magenta Savannah. Mmm, Magenta Savannah. <laughs> well, the name alone would put you in a trance. Yeah, you're right. I think I'll give her a ring. Here, <laughs> yeah, come here, you. You've had your last ciggy. I've been in the cellar stocking up for mixers. You've been hammering nails in your coffin while well, you've hammered your last nail. Honest, Vera, I haven't. Look, you are going to be cool, Jack Duckworth. Like it or not. Oh, he's in the gents having a go at that graffiti. In the gents having a slice smoke, more like. Come out of there, Jack Duckworth, before I kick the door in. And I don't care what you're doing. Right, you can take your seat in, Aunt, in there now. She'd have to take an oxygen cylinder with her. I haven't been smoking. Oh, what have you been doing then, eh? Setting fights at your rhinos? Oh, give me strength. What do you want me for anyway, Vera? Look, I just wanted to tell you, I've been on the phone to this uh, Magenta Savannah. Magenta Savannah, what's that? Sounds like a Spanish racehorse. No, oh, she's an hypnotist. She'll put you straight. Straight about what? About smoking, I've told you. And I've told her, and oh, well, at least an answer machine. Well, can you not think about out else? No. No, well, I can. Right. Yeah, hang about. Listen, she'll bring him back in a few minutes. I want you in there where I can see you. Go on. Here. Don't warn him. I've been watching him for the last five minutes. Pretending to be a customer, are you? I am a customer, Vera. I bought a pint. I'm allowed to smoke. Get me that. What have you done, woman? That was my flaming lifeline. What am I going to do now? You are going to put yourself in the hands of Magenta Savannah. She's just rung me now. We've had a good chat. She wants your nurse to seat day after tomorrow. I'm not going. Look, I'm not arguing. If you had a decent death policy, it'd be different. But as it is, you're worth more to me alive than dead. I'm touched. You will be touched if you don't get back to work. Look, I want him behind that bar in two minutes. It'll take me longer than that to suck me pints. Two minutes. I thought you'd given these up. I have. You're buying them for a friend? No, what it is... Rita, I'm, I'm approaching this problem scientifically. Oh. You see, nicotine is a drug. Now, if you stop taking it all at once, the side effects can be terrible. So what you do is you lower the dosage, don't it? I can sell them in ones. No, 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 no. I'll smoke them in ones. Right. But could I have a gazette and an echo, please, Rita, love? Right. We've got them on the table in the back room. Have we? I never noticed. You're buying cigarettes, aren't you, Jack Duckworth? You're going to kill yourself. Vera, I've smoked them for years. It's saved of being hungry and having to eat. It is difficult, Vera. I mean, I've had this conversation over this counter for years. 
What am I going to do without you, Jack? When all there is of you is a puff of smoke coming out of a crematorium chimney. Ah, well, we've all got to go sometime, haven't we? Yeah, but we're still young. I'm not young. Well, you're not old, Jack. Look, Jack. Oh, all right. Put your ciggies back on the shelf, will you, love? Give us a packet of mitts. Oh, you lovely, Jack. You lovely. Yes, yes, I know. I just hope Magenta Savannah is. Des tells you you're going to football tonight. Oh, does he? Mm. Well, you know me, Betty. Try anything once, even if I would rather watch paint dry. <laughs> well, morning, Jack. And how are you today? Oh, no doubt fit enough for our day's graft, Natalie. But then again, whoever said that life was for anything else? Would a nice cup of tea help, you poor old misery? You can put one in front of me, Betty, love. All right. Today's your day for, um, hypnotherapy, isn't it, Jack? Aye. For what good does it do me? Well, it might work wonders. I mean, it must for some. Better work for him. Our lives won't be worth living. If it were left to me, Betty, I'd sooner take my chances with the six. Oh, no, you wouldn't. Not now you've had a scare. Oh, yes, I would. I mean, what point is having more misery years on the scrappy, bendy of life? Excuse me. Look, the more lusty young lad years, yes. I mean, there's an incentive, but being decrepit... Do you know what I... I'd sooner be enjoying myself and then, then go happy when I'm called. Well, I just hope this hypnotist knows her stuff. The trouble is, Jack, if you really don't want to stop, then I doubt this magenta savannah woman can force you. Oh, don't you worry, I'll be forced, all right. Or else I'll be wasting 95 precious quid. 95 quid? Yes, so get your money's worth. What are you talking about, woman? Do you realise how many fags 95 quid will buy? Look, this is guaranteed never again. Because if it don't work first time, you get to go back again free. And go back to your will, Jack Duckworth, till you're cured. So, Mr Duckworth, if you'd just like to take a seat to start off. Thank you very much, look. Hey, yeah, there's a bit of a niff in here, isn't there? Mm, I think one of my cats has been a naughty boy. And <laughs> serve that again. Can you spell it, Jack? No, I can't, Vera. Fortunately, you see, all my nose buds are all furred up, aren't they, through smoking? So, right, are we going to get on with it and you're going shopping, are you? No. I want to stay and see what happens to you. Oh, come on, Vera. That's all right, isn't it? I mean, we're paying you enough, aren't we, for a quick rundown? It's fine by me, Mrs Duckworth. <laughs> if you don't mind perching on here. I mean, it's not every day that I leave my husband, you know, in a strange woman's house. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it involve, then? Is it like uh, on telly? Oh, no. Nothing as dramatic as that, I'm afraid. Except for the cost. Shush, yo. Well, I'm happy to explain that too, Mrs Duckworth, because I know it must seem a lot of money, but what it really represents is commitment, isn't it? It's Jack telling me how much he really wants to give up smoking. Well, it's more me telling you for him, you know. Because I haven't got a voice of my own, you see. Oh. <laughs> well, basically, all I'm here to do is help guide Jack where you both already want him to go, which is to be a successful non-smoker, right? Yeah, but what if there's big bits about him that don't want to? Well... When I've put him into a light trance, I shall then communicate directly with his subconscious. And I'll ask it to put me in touch with any parts of himself which still want to carry on smoking. Then, one by one, we'll get his subconscious to help us change those parts so that they no longer interfere with his rational desire not to smoke. Great. Let's get on with it, then. No, hang about. It's fascinating, is this? I've heard about people that have had hypnosis, you know. I mean, some of them, they can take them right back to when they're an unborn baby, in womb. Oh, and further back than that. Yeah. Back to past lives. Do you mean, really? Oh, yes. I mean, I don't specialise in regression therapy myself. But I have experienced it. Do you mean you? Oh, yes. It wasn't planned. It just happened when I was doing my training. Because we all have to practice on each other as students. And this one occasion, I was just taken down too deep. Really? How far? Well, all the way back to Roman times, actually. When I was a dancing girl in the golden house of Nero. Mm. Were you uh, one of those belly sort of dancers, were you? 
Well, sort of an ancient Roman table dancer, I suppose we call it now. <laughs> Entertaining the Emperor's guests at banquets. Oh, oh topless with us. Hey, you! Oh, no, Vera, come on. I mean, like you said, it was fascinating, wasn't it? But I think maybe we'd better get started on you now. <laughs> yes. I think you'd better get him under quick, him. Right, well, I'm ready. Well, I'm ready and willing. So, if you'd like to come back about four o'clock, Mrs Duckworth, at Keys under at Matt, just let yourself in. Right. Here. And you'll just concentrate on why you're here. Well, to get rid of that nasty habit, Vera. Right, then. <laughs> If I can just take down a few details about your smoking history, mm -hmm. then I'll ask you to lie down on the couch. <laughs> now, I'm going to count down from ten, and you're going to feel more and more dreamy and floaty, your eyelids getting heavy. And when I finish counting, you're going to feel completely relaxed. So, I'd like you to visualise a staircase with ten steps leading down to a beautiful garden. Now imagine your foot is on the top step and now it's on the ninth and you're slowly walking down the staircase. Eight. Seven, six, five, feeling so sleepy. Four, three, two, one. I'm going to ask your subconscious to give me an image. So, just say the first image that comes into your mind. <clears throat> Subconscious, can I have an image, please? Flag and a veil! Oh, thank you. Is that Jack's subconscious speaking? Oh, uh... That's fine, then. <clears throat> well, subconscious, Jack has told me that he wants to stop smoking. He needs your help to do this. So can you tell me, please, why you think Jack smokes? Well, that'd be because he likes it. Right. Thank you, subconscious. Mm. I'd like to talk to Jack's pleasure part now. <laughs> pleasure part? <laughs> Are you there? Oh, I, I, I... <laughs> Pleasure part. Do you think Jack enjoys his life? Oh, I, I, I... So he has lots of other pleasures in his life apart from smoking. Oh, I, he, he loves a rabbit stew and a flag and a veil and a some wench are sitting on his knee. <laughs> um, I, I think I'd like to talk to Subconscious again. Subconscious, could you confirm, please? Is this definitely Jack Duckworth speaking? Duckworth? Who be ye? Well, who am I speaking to, then? Jack Johnson. Sorry? Lusty Jack Johnson from Weatherfield. <laughs> Come back, Pleasure Part, please. Pleasure Part, are you there? Aye, aye. Thank you. Now, pleasure part, what I want you to do, please, is to visualise a piece of paper divided into nine squares. <laughs> nine squares, three across and three down. Now, I want you, please, to visualise smoking in the top left-hand square and then fill all the other squares with all the other wonderful pleasures in Jack's life. Have you done that? Ah. Good. Thank you. Now, I want you to cut out the square with smoking in it and destroy it. Just crumple it up and throw it away. Right. 
Now look at the other eight squares again. And a strange thing is starting to happen. Can you see? The other squares are all moving up and filling in the space. So they are, big guard. There's me on top of Bessie, my trusty shy horse. And I can smell new sawdust from my tavern floor. There's me on Mount Jesse, my other trusty shy horse. Stop! Stop! <laughs> Subconscious! What's happening here? Right. Um, subconscious. Can I please reconfirm? Is this definitely Jack Duckworth I'm talking to? All right. Go on, then. Good. Thank you. Now, I want you, please, to visualise sitting in a room of your choice with all the cigarettes you've ever smoked in your life piled up on a table in front of you. Now, take one cigarette from the pile, light it, and smoke it. Yeah. Please do that. Now, light another match and set fire to all the other cigarettes. Well, Just set fire to them, please. Are they all on fire? Aye. Good. So tell me, what does it feel like in this room now? Smoky. Yes. Now just smell all of that horrible smoke clogging up your lungs, making you feel old and ill, making you cough. <coughs> Is that how you want to feel in the future? OK. So now, let's visualise the same room with no cigarettes in it at all. They've all disappeared completely. Um, all of them, including the one in your hand, So tell me, how does it feel in this lovely smoke-free room now? Does it feel fresh and clean and healthy? Hey, lass. Smells of arse dung and me old leather boots. I think some anti cat's been tinkling up my wainscoat. OK. Um, just tell me, does, does anything in this room smell at all like cigarettes? Cigarettes? What be they? One last question. Do either of you two Jacks still want to smoke? What do you say? Does Jack Duckworth still want to smoke? No way, never again in a million years. <laughs> Why, then, that's wonderful. Because from now on, your life's going to be clean and healthy all the time. Because whatever you do, you won't want to smoke. Right. <laughs> well, now. I'm going to count back up to ten, then you'll open your eyes and you'll be completely awake and refreshed and free from your smoking habit forever. So, here we go. One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's What's happening? Have I been hypnotised? Yes. How do you feel? Great. Completely awake and refreshed. And gasping for a fag? No way, Vera. Fresh air, that's all I want. Uh, you pay this lady the cheque and I went outside. Thanks very much, love. Do you know, I'm a new man for all that. I really am. Mm. Yeah, is he really cured then? Truly, I think he's one of the most susceptible subjects I've ever treated. Oh, I think I'll have to write it up for the hypnotist journal. How do you mean? I must advise you, Mrs. Duckworth. If by any chance he refers to himself as Lusty Jack, please let me know. But on no account should you try and shake him out of it. Oh, no. oh. Oh, sorry we're late about Betty, love. Only I thought I'd take him for a nice tea, you know, to treat him. Has it worked? How do you feel? Oh, it feels fantastic, it, don't you, love? Betty, love, you wouldn't believe it. I feel like a new man. 
Thank heavens for that. And, and it won't bother you? Thought smoking round you? Not a hint of temptation, Vera, my lover. Tell you the truth, be honest now. I look at smokers and I think, I feel pity. And then I look at them and I, I think, you poor, sad beggars, I think. Yeah, I tell you, it's a miracle cure. <laughs> Come on, love. Mm -hmm. Just smell that air, Bessie. Doesn't it make you feel good to be alive? Does it? Oh, it does, I. Alive and free, Betty. Free? Free, Betty. I am no longer struggle with the demon weed. I am no longer a slave to my craving. Uh, uh. Oh, that perfume. Ah, oh, it's you, Vera, my love. You what? What was your note, Liquid? Oh, I put on you, my angel. Look, do you think you could manage to go down and bring a few barrels? Look, v, v, just give us a minute, will you? I just want to nip outside and sniff the Weatherfield ozone. What's your note, Liquid, eh? Look what I've been missing all these years, Betty. What's got into him? Oh, I don't know. Here, how will this work? Betsy, love, you know, that magenta. I bet she's done it. Mm -hmm. Hiya, morning, guys. Hiya. Oh, morning, lovies. Here, Natalie, you know, that magenta. I think she's cured him. Who? Oh, really? Yeah, you know that woman I took him to, you know, to yeah. stop smoking? Qualified hypnotist. Oh, aye. She, like, puts you in a trance and suggests things. It's really fascinating. So what do you mean? She's put Jack in a trance and told him to stop smoking? Oh, yeah, she's fully trained, you know. Trained in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Well, you should have got her to suggest that he upped our wages. Oh, <laughs> yeah. what? Yeah. Listen, now I know it works. There's a few things she can suggest for me. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, girls. Oh, hiya, Jack. Hi, Jack. Been out for a puff? Wash your mouth out. <laughs> what kind of washing up liquid do you use? Hey. Oh, look, send a notice of him. Anyway, you got another match last night. What was the score? Lost. One nil. Do you know they couldn't find the net if they were deep sea fishermen? Next time you want to get Des to take you to an away game. Still be a rubbish match. At least you'll have a day out, won't you? My nose. Good. Here, what do you think you're doing? We're just about to open up. What is this, wench? You are. I'll take my oil when I like. Tis a fine thing when a landlord cannot taste the fruit of his own barrel. Jack. Now be off to the scullery before I take thee across my knee. Better only. Nice spot of ale, this. Why, it is young Natalie. Alas, for the taken, I'll be pound. I tell you, lass, let's go to the stable while the Harridan is still about her tutors. Jack, what are you on about? Oh. Oh, hello, Natalie. Love, I'm not to see you. Any more left in it? Landlord? Certainly, sir. Wench, take his lordship's horse round to the stables and let it sup also. Did you wear that? There we are, sir. I hope that is to your liking. Two groats, if you please. And cheap at the price, tavern keeper. Mm. Worth every farthing. <laughs> Jack. Jack. J Jack. Who calls? What is a shrew? What is it, woman? Can you come through with me and sit back now? You know, come with me. <laughs> the magic of Lusty Jack still works its wonders, do you see? I've got to wait your turn, woman. I've got other wenches to service for thee. But if you go yonder and prepare my victuals, I might step in shortly. You what? Go on, then. Be off with you. <laughs> right, what do you want, Vera? Oh, you're not lusty. I'm hungry. What's for dinner? Come here. Look, give over. What's the matter with you? Look, I'm feeling your head. Are you sure you're all right? All right. I'm all right. I'm never better. You don't want your head examining. Never mind dinner. I'll go and get some crisps. You are right, Vee? So Jack is reversed. He's what? He's reversed. Ever since he went to that hypnotic, so he thinks there's somebody from a bygone age. He's just reversed. Regressed? No, you don't think he has. But what else can he be?
We'd like a word, please, Vera. Yes, it's about your Jack. He might think he's having a laugh, but as far as we're concerned, it's harassment. And we're not standing for it, are we? No, we're not. No, look, you don't understand he's not responsible for his actions. Look, don't go making excuses for him, Vera. I mean, if he as much as breathes too close to me, I shall be straight through that door. And I shall be straight after him. Mm. Look, I'm sorry for what's happened, but it's not Jack's fault. Well, not our Jack's fault. Are you suggesting that we were leading him on? No, don't you see? He's regressing to a previous life. Oh, I'm a gentlewoman. This could happen. I'd better go make another appointment. So... She's on holiday. Won't be back till tomorrow. So let me get this straight. Instead of putting him in a mild trance to help him stop the fags, she put him in a deep trance. Well, she said he were extra susceptible. Right. And it was while he was in the deep trance that he started talking like other Jack. <laughs> yeah. Lusty Jack Johnson? Yeah, lusty, as in can't keep his hands to himself. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It was Lusty Jack Johnson in a previous life. When, exactly? Uh, well, we're not sure, but from where he's been talking, it's round about the time of Long John Silver. Well, I don't think he existed in real life, did he? <clears throat> so, does normal Jack become Lusty Jack at certain times of the day or well, night? One minute is Lusty. And next minute is not. Oh, I don't know where I am with him. So you just don't know what triggers it off? Well, once you start delving into paranoia. I think you mean subconscious, Vera. Look, he's normal, Jack, this morning. In fact. Hang on a minute. Jack? Can you come through here a minute? What? 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 I think you owe these girls an apology. Why? What are you on about? Tell him, Natalie. He knows exactly why. Will somebody tell me what I'm supposed to have done? Grabbing hold of my backside. Kiba, you've got to be joking. I wouldn't touch your bum. Not hey, 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 cheeky. No, no, but, but Betty, what, what, what I meant was... I'd, I wouldn't dream of taking such a liberty. Well, you did. And not just with Betty's, either. No. When? In the bar yesterday. No, surely not. I, 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 I wouldn't. Now, come on, girls. You're having me on, aren't you? I wish we were. Well, I can only say that I'm... I'm... I'm sorry, Anna. Yeah, uh, hey, Jack. Uh, mm? uh, look, don't fret yourself, Flo. Listen, uh, you, you, you'll go through into the sitting room. See? He doesn't remember a thing. Call for the constable. Some thief has made off with Bessie and Jesse. Bessie and Jesse? The mares. I left them tethered in the yard and now they've gone. Look, Jack, the only animals you've got in that backyard are your pigeons. I will wager it's the baker's boy. If it is, I'll have him hung. No, hang on a minute. Look, you haven't got horse, Jack. No horse? No. Well, you've got part share in a racehorse, but, well, that's not the same thing. Oh, then am I supposed to carry the barrels on my shoulders to ten miles to the brewery? We get them delivered. I am an innkeeper, not some scurvy knave woman. How can I live without a horse? Here, Betsy, Natalie, watch yourselves. It's gone in reverse again. Well, you better keep away from me, or so I'll clatter him across the head with this. What is this? No crowns, no groats? But we've got notes now. What do you want money for? If we've no horse, then I must buy one. Twenty guineas will buy me a sturdy beast. Twenty guineas? Here, where are you going? If I need a horse, then I go to a horse trader. And I'll thank you not to question me, mistress. Do. I can't let him go wandering off on his own. He'll come to no harm, love. How do you know? Oh, it could happen to him. Well, he'll have a little walk round and then he'll come to his senses. Where does he think he's going to get us from? Hello. Thanks. Yeah, where have you been all afternoon? I've been worried sick about you. Well, it's just ten mile or more I've walked today and built up a mighty thirst. You find a horse? I've seen many a horse this day, but none so sturdy as Bessie and Jessie. Mm -hmm. Listen, come through and sit back. Your tea's nearly ready. Have you any favourite? Lax tongues and aspic. No, chicken and chips. Never mind sitting there in front of the telly. Get out there in bar. 
Tis magical. Tis a box of moving pictures. Is it salivation? What trickery is this? Come out, I say. Come out. Well, there's nobody in there, Jack. He runs by electricity. Electricity? Oh, never mind. Stay where you are. Me and Betsy will have to manage on his own. <laughs> You mean to say that while we're in here, rushed off our feet, he sat in front of that goggle box with his feet up, listening his glow to it? You see, they didn't have televisions in Lusty Jack's days. No. It's modern times. Uh, we're, we're all foreign to him. Our days worked foreign to him. Look, he's never done a stroke all day. Look, he's not much good to us in that state, is he? You're going to have to do something, Vera. You can't let him carry on the way he is. Yet we'll have fully intent to, as soon as that magenta gets back. Right. Tea's brewed. Tea, woman? You'll have us in the gutter with your fancy new fangled foreign drinks. Foreign tea? Tis from the Indies, Pat. Better water from the well, nay. Better good old English ale. God save the king. Jack, you've got to stop it. <clears throat> what, what was you saying? I was miles away then. It, have I pulled this pint? Look, I don't want you to take this wrong way, but sometimes you start talking like somebody else. Some different past, you know, in history. What are you talking about, girl? It's like you're turning to somebody who's been here before. You know, in another life. Give over. You do. Look, I believe in reincarnation, me. Cos I know I've definitely been here before. Oh, well, it sounds a load of rubbish, does that? I mean, if there was anything in this reincarnation lark, I mean, my luck, I'd come back as a Man City supporter. Innkeeper! Coming, Squire! What be your pleasure, Squire? Do what it... Do what it take it? You're still getting away with all this tomfoolery. I am, I. Our Vera reigns on reincarnated. And at one time, I was Lusty Jack Johnson in 1700 and frozen to death. Bye, <laughs> <laughs> Jack. Like the man said, you can fool some of the people all, all the, the time. time. <laughs> <laughs> have a glass of your finest Scottish brew. Coming to you, Squire, coming to you. Yeah, what were you asking you just now? Who? The Squire? That's not a flaming Squire. It's Fred Elliot. I know it's Fred Elliot. I'm serving him, aren't I? Look, Jack. What's the flaming news? <laughs> oh! Oh, oh, what's up? Oh, it is my kidney. It is a dreaded stone. I shall end up being cut for it. Oh, Jack. I must lay me down. It is like the apothecary said. It is rest alone can cure the stone. <laughs> no, you go lie down, Lord. Oh, That'll oh. be the best. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with Mr. Duckworth? Why is he talking like that? You know, I'm worried sick about him. You see, this woman hypnotised him, you know, to stop smoking. Only she took him back in the past and now it's somebody else. What, you mean she regressed him to a former life experience? Yeah, that's right. Only our chat doesn't know it's happening to him. Who is he when he goes back? Oh, where is he? Th this is vital, Vera. Well, he's still here in Weatherfield, only like in the 1700s. I mean, he still runs a pub and... Oh, I don't know. I'll tell you, it's making an old woman out of me. He could be a mine of information on bygone Weatherfield. I must talk to him while he's in this state. Yeah. I don't want him in this state. I want him back. I and I'm going to get him back and all. Betty, keep an eye on our Jack while I go see that hypnotist woman. It's got to stop. But, Mrs Duckworth, we could learn so much about the past. But beg of the past. I want my husband back. But he keeps waking me up at night, kicking me out of bed, slapping me backside, saying, get back to the village. Oh, I've had enough. Come. Did you want a tarot reading, dear? Eh? Uh, no, I've come about our Jack. Listen, I thought you were an hypnotist. Hypnotherapist? I am, dear. Wednesdays and Fridays, Mondays and Thursdays, I'm readings from the cards and peeps into the crystal ball. <laughs> oh. mm. You'll not always be where you are now. I'm seeing a bungalow. 
It is the future you wish to see, dear, is it? Now, look. Beggar the future. I have enough on my plate with our Jack's past. Now, what are you going to do about it? I think he's asleep. When he wakes up, will it be as Mr Duckworth or, or as this other personality? Don't ask me. You should leave him be. <laughs> I want to talk to him in his previous incarnation, while it still manifests itself, as it were. It's a wonderful opportunity to understand the past, you see. Uh, understand our forefathers. Well, I say let sleeping dogs lie. Oh, Come on. Who be that? It's all right, Jack. It's under me. Who be that with thee? I know he. He be the post office clerk. Pardon? No, no, no. no. There I... is no pox in this house. Oh, he's with the pixies, is this one? Leave this to me, Betty. Right. Uh, uh, Mr Johnson, mm. I am a neighbour. Could we converse a while? About what? Oh, life, state of the nation. Women. I knows a lot about women. Yes, that, well, that would be interesting too. No so doubt. be it. We'll go into my tavern. And if it's talking you want, he's going to have to wet my whistle. <laughs> Luke, this discussion we're having, it counts as a consultation. I shall have to charge you. Get bad. I'd come for my money back for our Jack. You were paid to stop him smoking, not to turn him into a, a throwback to Middle Ages. Well, I'm surprised you're grumbling. This lusty Jack sounds more fun to have about the house than the fellow you brought in here. If you ask me, you don't know when you're well off. Yeah, well, I'm not asking you, am I? You know, dear, I could take you back in time. Well, I bet you've had some wonderful past lives. You get like um, an instinct in this business. And I would say, you've been a queen in your time. Well, between you and me, I'm not real bad. I knew it. See, get on the settee. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you the session at half price. Hey, hang about. I I've come about our Jack. He was supposed to stop him smoking. Well, has he? Well, yeah, but... Well, there you are, then. Now, just lie down and relax. Has anyone ever told you you've a look of Cleopatra? Well, as a matter of fact, they have. <laughs> Rathella. He told me to lay down and relax and all. <laughs> Can I ask you, uh, <clears throat> Lusty Jack, mm -hmm. what sports and pastimes are popular in these parts? Well, oh, the same as is popular in all parts. Wenching and a quenching. I beg pardon? Well, first he goes into the woods, a wenching, builds up a mighty thirst, and then he comes back here, a quenching. <laughs> <laughs> Times don't seem to have changed much, do they? I say they've not changed much. So, there has been no shortage of turnips in Weatherfield these past few years, then? No, there's been plenty of turnips for all who want them. Evidently, the great turnip blight of the hungry thirties is over. Mm. So, the year we are living in, um, Lusty Jack, mm. would be, what, 1742, 1744? Don't he know what year it be? It'd be 1746. W wonderful. Well, you must have very clear memories of last year's great events then. 1745. When the Scots army marched through here on their way to attack London. Oh, I, that was when I got my first taste of the Scottish firewater. <laughs> Best humour him. Natalie! Two large scotches here and an orange juice for Mr. Cropper. Mr. Cropper's paying. I believe they were made very welcome round here, the Scottish soldiers. Oh, wenches all over. I suppose the girls all wanted to get a glimpse of the young pretender. I've never heard it called that afore. <laughs> I think he means Bonnie Prince Charlie. Oh, I, I, I. he gave them Scotty's what for, did Bonnie Prince Charlie? He got shot of them. Hang on, th th this can't be right. <laughs> no. Uh, uh. Hello, Roy. Didn't see you coming, son. That down, yeah. And I hope you're going to eat it all now you've asked for it. Four rushes, three eggs. <laughs> <laughs>
and the rest. Look, I haven't time to run around after you all, dear. I've been up since seven. I, I'm, I'm sorry, my dear, I didn't hear the cock crow. No. No, but you heard the alarm clock, kicked me out of bed and, and turned over. Here you are, <laughs> your lordship. <laughs> What's this here with your breakfast? Well, we ran out of porter. Yours is Newton and Ridley's best. <laughs> Here, when you finish that, get the crates put out. The drayman's coming. Not until I've had a long soak in my bath, mistress. He don't have a bath from one month at next. <laughs> Lusty Jack does. Look, uh, I'm sorry, Betsy, but you'll have to do it. Put the crates out? I'm not doing that, not at my age. <sighs> well, look, you run his bath then and I'll see to crates. This is a joke, this. I'm fed up. But how do you think I feel? Look, I thought you said we'd got to humour him. I, I know. What, what else can we do? Well, how if I run him a, a nice cold bath? I mean, that should snap him out of it a bit, shouldn't it? I mean, I could push him in. I'd be glad to. No. That could backfire. Oh. The shock could keep him in a time walk for good. What is your saying, mistress? Nothing, squire. Do you know swing for that hypno woman? Vera! What? Bitter's gone. Oh. Jack, can you change a bubble for us? Will it not wait? No, it won't. Oh, then I have to take a stroll upon the heath. Oh. What heath? I think he means the red wreck. Look, love, what do you want to go up there for? Well, I, I feel a little faint, you see, and I need some fresh air. You're still not feeling well, love. Mm. I wish you'd go back to doctors. No, 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 love. Nothing that won't be cleared by a little fresh air. <laughs> Do you know, he's never lifted a finger all day. Not right, you know. Look, uh, Natalie, will you do it for us, love? It's, uh... Do you know, Vera, I really think Jack should go back to the doctors. Mm. And if I break my ankle on those steps, I'm going to sue that hypnotherapist. Uh, uh, a bottle of cider, please. Dry. I thought you didn't drink. It's alcoholic, you know, it's cider. Oh, uh, no, no, unopened. It's for culinary purposes. There's a recipe in this month's magazine. I thought I'd try it for tomorrow's special. Oh, Port Wellington. Very popular in the time of Waterloo. Yeah. How we used to eat. I hope you won't be giving it to young kiddies. I mean, it's bad enough as Alka Pops without Alka food. Uh, it's purely flavouring. The, the, the alcohol evaporates in the cooking. Oh, it's one Raj. I can't ask for some of these. <laughs> Coddled eggs, roast saddle of venison. Hey. <laughs> you still know about it, you know, you're still living it past half the time. I, I don't know whether I should mention this, but uh, are you convinced about his condition? Oh, he's in a time warp, isn't he better? Well, when it suits him. <laughs> yeah, but it's not his fault. I, I, I do think Betty has a point, though. I, I was talking to him yesterday about uh, Bonnie Prince Charlie. Oh, aye. Yes, according to Jack, he, he passed through Weatherfield quite recently. Only well, has, but not recently. About ten years ago, when he opened New Abattoir. Doesn't mean Prince Charles. Bonnie, Prince Charlie, otherwise known as the, the Young Pretender. We're talking 1745. Ah, so he didn't pass through Weatherfield then? Oh, he most certainly did, on his way down from Carlisle. But according to Jack, he was chasing the Scots. Well, I'm sorry, but that is incorrect. He was leading them against the English. Well, of course he was. I mean, I even knew that. So our Jack got his facts wrong, then? Uh, completely. So he couldn't have really been uh, going back in time, could he? Apparently not. Yeah. So he's been pretending all this time. Right. I'll bother this. Listen, he usually has a nap about four. So if you see curtains pulled at front, you'll know it's safe. Yeah, and when you've done that, listen, I'll get in touch with you. Well, it might be a week, maybe more. And don't forget to bring some feathers. Well, I don't know. You must have a pillar or something. Hang on, is there? Oh. oh, hello, love. Uh, feeling better, are you? Do you know, Vera, I think I am. <laughs> do you know what I think you could do with a nice drop of port? Well, I won't argue with that. It was on the phone. All right, we're just uh, somebody asking us if we needed some new guttering or some. Uh... Oh, telly sales, they want locking up, don't they? <laughs> Made you a special meal tonight. Oh. Roy Cropper brought a, a recipe in. It's a banquet. What is it? Oh, it's a surprise, but you like it. Oh. Here. 
Thanks, Hello. Vera. Oh, do you know, I'm glad you're feeling better, love, cos there's a few jobs we want doing. <laughs> what be that, mistress? Oh, you haven't slipped back, have you, Jack? I... What day is it? It's Wednesday, why? It is my night for going out of the town. Oh, you mean, like, drinking, wenching and the dogs? Afraid so. Oh, God, it must be hard work, love, all this slipping back in past. Hey, listen... Why don't you take your paw upstairs and have a nice lie down, eh? If you insist, I yeah. shall do whatever my good wife says. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, then. <laughs> Hello, Rover's return. Yes, hang on a minute, I'll get him. Vera, Newton and Ridley's on the phone for Jack. Oh, he's asleep. Don't wake him up. Got me out on my hands. Hello? Uh, it is indisposed. Uh, could you ring back in the morning? Well, as early as you like. It'll be up. His <laughs> feet won't touch. Oh, I had a good sleep, have you? <laughs> Well, I've put your clothes out and I found your best shirt. Mm. Uh, so what time are you going out then? Early. Yeah. Well, you have a good time. <laughs> and behave yourself, husband. Fear thee not, mistress. <laughs> I'll get your tea then. <laughs> and I've poured you a mug of ale. A mug of ale. By the act, that smells good. Well, it's an ancient recipe. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of years old. <laughs> Nothing but the best for my lusty jack. Have you not having a portion, mistress? No, uh, I'll have mine later. Now you'll get stuck in. So, uh, where are you going tonight? Oh. Pay my respects to a couple of alehouses. Yeah, you do, right. Mustn't neglect your social mm -hmm. life. Maybe. Have a wager on a dog or two, I... I well, it's just harmless for uh, me now. Uh, uh, this pie is spot on, mistress. Yeah, hey, uh, you might bump into Bonnie Prince Charlie. Hey! <laughs> well, he comes through Weatherfield regular. Sure, sure. Bonnie Prince Charlie. <laughs> the young pretender. Mm. Hey, happen I know his mate. The old pretender. Enjoying your pie, are you? Aye. What is it? Well, it's an ancient recipe. Some I thought you'd be partial to. Mm -hmm. Rabbit. Pheasant. Pigeon. Where are they? I told you. I hated the taste nice. You know, me, me Dulcie and me Fergie. No, I'm, I'm going to be sick. All of them. Hardly enough meat to fill a pie. Hardly enough meat on any of them. <laughs> you murderers! Yes, and you're a con man. Mean it, V. You owe Curly a large drink. Jack was ready to come round here with a shotgun last night. Give you a taste of your own medicine. Ah, oh, no, the dozy lummox. Hey, what have I missed? Jack spent the night on Curly's sofa. So Ken. Vera got rid of his pigeons. She told him that she put them in a pie. <gasps> you never did. Shocked him out of his trance, eh? You should have seen his face. So what did you really do with them? That's what I want to know. Oh, look what the cat's dragged in. Beware, Vera. You are drinking at the last chance saloon. Back on the ciggies, I see. Like a flaming beetle. Why don't you stick one in each ear? I'll need tranquilizers in a minute. You tell me my pigeons are safe and even you couldn't be so callous. Oh, give over. They were Jamie and Ray. You'll get them back. Stop mithering. And I'm supposed to believe that, am I? From you. Of course, they'll be back. They just follow the smoke signals. <laughs> Fiona, come here. I'm not finished with you yet. Hey, I feel like cattle long <laughs> You look a million dollars, Vera. <laughs> well, I need to be where I'm going tonight. It's £9.50, you know, for a starter. <laughs> Our Jack won't know what's hit him when he gets the bill in the morning. <laughs> Still, I'm old it, love, I tell you. Right, I'll see you girls. All right, Vera. Desmond, what's your poison? Oh, I'll have a pint, please, Fred. Now then, tavern keeper. 
A foaming flagon of your finest ale for this trusty young vagabond here. Fred. Fred. And a drop of Bonnie Prince Charlie's favourite for myself. Fred. And at 17.46 prices, if you can see your way clear. Fred. Ah. Oh. There is a polite notice up there. Is there? That says, please don't ask for drinks at 17th century prices, because a punch in the mouth often offends. Punch in the mouth? Eh? Sam, Sam, serve this gentleman, will you? While he still has a full set of teeth. Yes, Fred, what can I get you?